I'm just completing the contents that, sh that is supposed to be finished in the first lecture. So we know that big O notation, okay, the big O, so that's the in the book, big O notation. So this, the coefficient is the big O of this, means that the left-hand side is bounded by a constant multiple of right-hand side. So this is bounded up by a constant multiple of 1 over n squared, absolute value. This is C such that it is bounded by this for large this. So no matter if it's positive or negative. Okay, so there's a big notation. And before that, there's a something we need to know is that like a derivative of e to the i n theta is i n e to the i n theta. Okay, here's the computation. And you just you just integrate the real and imaginary part, okay, by definition of or yeah, whatever. But it turns out like it says like like it agrees even on complex numbers, even the imaginary unit is introduced. Okay, it doesn't matter. And the corollary says that oh suppose f is a twice continuously differentiable or C2 function on the circle. So this is uh, periodic then then the four series of converges as to be uniformly. So if it's a twice continuous twice continuous if it's C two, then we also have uniform convergence. F, the, the first series coverage in which F. Okay, which is really a beautiful result. And to do this, we just first consider when n is non zero, because when n is equal to zero, the zero coefficient is just a constant. Okay, and we wanna we wanna we wanna consider the Fourier series. So if this is just one constant, it will doesn't matter. So we just consider when n is non zero. Then we just we just one over two pi. So we're bringing it out here by definition which, because the Fourier coefficient is well defined for any interval right so we can just choose anything like 0 to 2 pi and we just perform integration by parts okay because we have this over here so if you really there's a lot of computation hidden behind and is basically just break break it up to real parts and imaginary parts so and this turns out to be zero because f is periodic. Okay. That's some property of this. So, but uh, after this one, we just do integrate by parts again because f is twice differentiable. So the double diff derivative is continuous, hence integrable. Okay. So this becomes, you just drop it down here and do, do integration by parts again. And because, because f is periodic, then f prime is also periodic right you're basically just just a copy of yourself okay so just do some calculation mm. so you have say fx is equal to f of x plus 2 pi right if this is a function of a circle then we have their difference is a constant function right the differences of a constant function and if you take their derivative, it's again equal to zero, right? Because the cause of the function so it has zero derivative. And for each of them, you can just separate them because you have different derivative rules. And the derivative of this, you apply chain rule, which we get that f prime x minus f prime at x plus two pi times one, right? Because n is equal to what is zero. And you move it that way, so the derivative is also periodic and you do it by parts again and you drop this yeah and you drop this to here and we can estimate this because we have 2 pi here we have n so we just multiply over there and we take absolute values on both sides okay and this is less than or equal to this and this is equal to 1 and this is less than 2 pi times b or B is a bound. B is a bound of of this. Okay, so so cancel out. We have this. Now for any theta, this sum is less than or equal to this sum, where n is not equal to zero. And each of them, we apply this inequality we got here. 
And notice that when n is negative, it's, it's the, the squares is still the same. So it's just really this. And we got this. And if it's n equals 0, we talk about before, then we can apply m test. Right, this area is bounded by some something, some constant, and the sum of the series of this constant converges. And this converges, so really have this, and you use the telescope to see that they're converging. Okay, so this um, proves the corollary. Okay. Well, in my opinion, like corollary in his book are like theorems. It's not really a corollary, and as this this marked right, we have we have those, and observe that this what is this? This is like a coefficient of the coefficient of this, right? Of f prime, right? Because if you move it here and you move i n back there, you got i n of what close to right yeah here for any and right, even n is zero when n is zero this side is equal to zero and for this let's just look at this so this is zero right so this is just one and here right you have one middle you have one middle theorem of calculus and which is f of two pi minus f of zero, but it's periodic, right? It's on a circle, so it's equal to zero. So it also vanishes. So we got something like if f is this, to f prime is some i n times the a n. Okay? All right. Okay, that's the end.